Today we are going to look at a lead code problem single number. The problem states given a non-empty array of integer nums, every element appears twice except for one element. Find that single one element. Okay, so let us understand this using an example. So suppose there is an array and there are five elements in that array. So every element in that array appears twice except for one element. So this two appears twice. This one appears twice except for this three and which is our output, which is what we have to find. Okay. So if you also look at the examples here, in the first example two appears twice and one appears once, so output is one. Okay. Also in the second example, one appears twice, two appears twice and four is unique. So four is what we have to find. That is our output. Okay, so let us get to the Jupyter notebook of this and I have defined a few test cases. The first two test cases are the same as what is given in the question. The third test case, the number is a single input. The nums array has only a single input. Okay, and the output will also be that single number itself. Okay, and the fourth test case is a long test case to compare the time complexities of the solutions. Okay. The long test case, we have taken all numbers from 1 to 10 lakh, two times, which appears twice, and 11 lakh, that appears one time. Okay, so now let us try to come up with the solution of this problem. We'll head on to the whiteboard and let us write the list 21213. So the very basic solution I can think of is sorting this list 11223. Notice that pairs are formed wherever the number are present twice. Okay. And only the number that is not present twice is unique and that is our target number. So here I have left some space and you can try to state this in plain English so that you have a better understanding of the solution and also it becomes easy for you to write the program. Okay. So let's write the program now. We'll first do a sort. Okay. We'll sort this nums list and then we will run a while loop while i is less than len nums minus 1. Why are we doing this minus 1? Because we are checking i and i plus 1 element. So in the last element, if we check i plus 1, we'll get a list index out of range error because there is no i plus 1 of last element. So basically, we are doing len nums minus 1. And the first condition we will give is nums of i is not equals nums of i plus 1 we will return nums of i. So this basically means that if there is another list, so if nums of i1 is not equal to nums of i plus 1, 2, okay, then we'll return nums of i, that is 1. And that is our target element. Now we'll increment this loop with a value of 2, just because we're checking each pairs, okay. So first pair increment 2, then second pair increment 2. So that's how we increment this loop. Finally, we return nums of i because we have not checked the last element. So if there is only one element remaining and all other elements are forming pairs, that means the last element is the target element. Okay, so we are returning it directly. Now let's evaluate this and wow, all the test cases have gave a pass grade. But let's focus on the last test case. Time taken to compute this is 283.993 millisecond. Okay, that's good. But let's see what's the time complexity and space complexity of this. The time complexity is big O of n log n. Why so? Because the worst case time to perform the sorting operation is n log n. So the time complexity is big O of n log n. And where n is the number of elements in the list okay although space complexity is constant because we're not taking any additional space inefficiency the program is taking a lot of time let's try to reduce it to linear complexity next goal is to reduce it to linear complexity so let's come back to the whiteboard and see how we can get to linear complexity so here is the nums list. One thing I can think of is I can take a set and wherever a number appears first time, okay, that is two. I'll insert the number in the set. Again, one I'll insert and whenever it appears again, I will remove it. 
one appears again i'll remove one this will leave us with only the number that is unique okay, so the set will only have the number unique number so again you can try to state it in plain english for your better understanding but let's write the solution for this so we'll define a set okay and we will run for num in nums for the number in numbers list okay if num not in s so if the number is or uh, let's say if the number is in s if the number is in s what we'll do is we'll remove it so the number is in the set we'll remove the number from the set else we will add the number in the set okay and it's num not nums okay so if the number is in the set we'll remove the number from the set if the number is not in the set we'll add it okay and finally we will return s but s is a set and s only has one element that is the unique element so we will do s dot pop now let us evaluate this okay okay and again all the test cases has passed and let us check the time taken for the last test case that is 202 and initially it took 283 so it is significantly lower why so because now the worst case time complexity has reduced to big o of n where n is the number of elements in the list why big of n because we are iterating over the nums list one time okay although the space complexity now is also increased to big o of n because we are defining an extra set so the inefficiency of this program is although the time complexity has reduced the space complexity has increased okay can we decrease the space complexity yes we can and let us get back to the whiteboard again i'll write the list here two one two one three okay and i'll write it in a vertical manner this time two one two one three okay the binary num representation of two is zero one zero for one it's zero zero one for two is again zero one zero for one is again zero zero one and finally for three it's zero one one okay so you have heard about the xor operation so one xor one is zero okay zero xor zero is again zero one xor zero is one and again one zero xor one is one so this is the xor operation and if we do this on a number two xor two will be zero but three xor zero will be three okay so that is the XOR operation and if we apply XOR here, so 2 XOR 2 will become 0 and 1 XOR 1 will again become 0 that leaves us with 3, okay. But these are all in different orders. So even if they are not in same order, we will still get the result as 3. Let us see how it happens. So if we consider this, this single vertical line, okay. So 0 XOR 1 gives 1, okay. 1 XOR 0 gives 1. 1 XOR 1 gives 0, okay, and 0 XOR 1 gives 1, okay. Similarly, 0 XOR 1 gives 1, One, this 1 XOR 1 gives 0, this 0 XOR 0 gives 0, and 0 XOR 1 gives 1, and XOR of all these zeros returns to 0. So, we finally got 0 1 1 which results to 3, okay. Hope that was clear. Now, let us try to write the program for this we will define a number 0 and we will iterate over this number for num in nums we will just do xor operation res xor and the symbol of xor in python is this exponent symbol res xor num okay now let us just return this res and this should give us the correct result and we can see that we have got correct in all of this the final result the long input returned with a 117 ms that is significantly lower than both of the above solutions this is because we are not doing any search here we're not doing any remove operation or add operation here 
okay so the time is even lower than the previous one now what is the worst case time complexity for this the worst case time complexity for this is big o of n because we are iterating over all the elements but the space complexity has used to constant because we are not using any extra space for a list or set so that's the solution of this program single number and this is how you basically solve lead code problem just try to find the easiest solution we can call it a brute force solution and you should try to find it as fast as possible solve it and try to get the result if you are getting the answer then then aim for the best solution you can think of okay if you are not able to think of any better solution just look at online platforms maybe youtube maybe google or maybe if you are doing it with a friend just ask your friend finally once we find the best best solution you can just look at the logic and try to solve the problem yourself okay that is the best way to learn dsa and solve lead code problems okay and you have to practice a lot and more such problems lead code problems are coming in our youtube channel so stay tuned and follow our channel thank you and goodbye